Hi friends, whenever we start learning something, we should know why we are learning this thing, how this thing will make the world better and in a software applications, how this thing will make the software applications better. Recently, I worked in a .NET project where I used microservices based architecture. Nowadays, microservices are very much in demand. In today's video, I will explain the high level architecture of my own project. I will not show you the actual code, but I will explain the relationship between the cloud, web APIs and microservices and why microservices based architecture, architecture is considered as the future of the big applications. Even if you are new to microservices, even then you can easily understand the concepts. So let's start. Before starting the architecture, let me give you the simplest description of the microservices. Microservices are the collection of multiple services. Here services are nothing but the web APIs in .NET. These APIs can communicate with each other. The point is why we need multiple APIs for one application. So I will answer this while explaining my own project. Other than web API, we have used few more things. For example, Azure Service Bus, Key Vault, Azure SQL Database, Azure Blob Storage. Even if you are not aware about these things, today you will get an idea what these things are and how they work together. All these services are of Azure and I will use this in my microservice project. I will not go in too much detail but you will get the idea what these services are. And most importantly, how they help us in creating the microservices based architecture. Alright, so let's come to my project. My project goal was to provide personal loans to customers. For that, suppose we have a customer or loan applicant who wants personal loan. Okay, now he or she will open the website company website on the internet and then he will upload the required documents and fill all the required information in our website. Okay, this website is basically our UI. In my case, it was made up of Angular. Here onwards, all our applications like Angular UI or any other web, U, web API, we will be using Azure for hosting them. If you are new to Azure, then just think Azure as a server which can host multiple applications. Azure can do many more things, but for keeping things simple, you can think Azure as a server only. Now this UI will post the data of the customer to the first web API of our application. We named this API as collection API because it is responsible for collecting the data from the customer. In Azure, web APIs are deployed as app services. Same in our case also, this web API will be deployed as app service in Azure. Then the customer data which we received from the customer is stored inside the Azure SQL database. It is same but as SQL server only. Relational data will be stored here in the table format and then the documents which customer has posted in the image format like JPG files, these documents will be stored in the Azure Blob Storage. Azure Blob Storage is used to store the images in Azure. I hope now you know what are these basic services in Azure. Then the connection string and the password which we normally stored in the app settings or configuration file of the web API.NET Core project. In our case, we stored them in the key vault. Key vault is used to store the secret information. Why we store the secret information in key vault? Because normally the developer has the access of the app settings file so they can easily access password and secret information. In a way, it's not secure to show your password even to the developers. Therefore, with Key Vault, developers can use the connection string via Key Vault, but they will not be able to view the secret information. Therefore, it's like an extra layer of security. And that is the best practice also, which is recommended by Microsoft to store this information. This is our first API, right, for collecting the collect, uh, in, uh, customer information. Now this collected data will be sent to the second API. This will basically validate the data. Validation means, for example, documents are complete or not. Documents are valid and authentic or not. 
customer details are proper or not now you might be having two questions first is why we are sending data to another api can't we validate the data in the same first api itself the answer is yes we can do it in the monolithic way only one web api but here we are talking about millions of users and if this one api is down due to some reason then all the work will be impacted right another problem is tomorrow there will be new enhancements bug fixing and newer versions of your applications you have to deploy right every time you will deploy them you have to block the users down the web api right this will just increase the downtime but if you have different apis for different functionalities then if there is any enhancement or bug fixing in first api then no need to down the second api only first api will be impacted and second api will not be impacted this is the top most benefit of microservices all services are apis and are independent of each other first api will not will only collect the data also with this architecture it is easy to maintain the single responsibility principle of the solid principle because here one api is doing only one thing not multiple things second question you might ask how we are sending the data from first api to the second api this is a very important question how we are managing sending the data from one service to another service the thing we are using here is service bus service bus is a message broker in azure for example in case of single api you will send the response to ui right Similarly in case of microservices the data similar to the response will be sent to another api here we will follow the pub sub model means publish and subscribe i will not go in the detail of that because then implementation will be very time taking but if you really want me to tell then let me know in the comment section and then i will create separate video on how to use pub sub model with service bus for microservices for now you can understand we will send the customer data which is a model or you can say data from web api for the web api number 2 this second api will then validate the data and documents now this is not completely automatic we have another admin ui team which is only accessible by the company uh, sorry admin ui which is accessible by accessible by the company employees only they will validate the customer information and approve or reject the details using api whatever the status they will put will be updated in the separate database of sql server now there are many more things they will update but the status is the most important so basically in pure microservices architecture we have different database for different services or apis but sometimes based on the requirement or some restriction we can use common database also for multiple apis now if the application is rejected then the status will be updated to rejected or in progress and customer can see this from the login to the customer website in the application status with reason if the application is approved then again by using the service bus we will send the approved request to the third api my third api is used for customer background verification background of verification means thing like things like uh, a customer uh, loan customer is a defaulter or not what is the credit score of customer what is the customer tax report etc etc this is final validation for that also there is a different team who are using the angular ui application to check out the customer details then they do their background check and update the status here loan will be finally approved or rejected whatever the application status the com- the customer can see the status from the, their ui so these are the three apis we developed in our project and i hope now you have the high level idea of how to design the dotnet microservices project finally let's quickly revise the revise the things which we have used until now we have used the web apis as app services 
then we used service bus which will help in communication between the web apis then key vault which will store the secret information like connection string of the database then blob storage which will store the images then azure sql which will store the data apart from this we have also used azure services like api gateway which is basically a common authentication system for all the apis with that our apis will be secure and there is no need to implement individual api authentication then other services like azure load balancer cdn cosmos db we have used all these services but i will not discuss them here because the video will be very long then but if you want me to explain then comment on the comment section and i will be very happy to explain them in future videos now my final thoughts on when we sh we should create microservices and when we should not create microservices if your application is small and then it's completely fine to create a monolithic single web api and put your all business logic there but if your application is big like amazon with millions of users then in order to manage in a better way we should go with the microservices architecture and each api where there are multiple services which are basically the apis and each api is independent of others because each api is responsible for different functionalities and deployed on different servers so this is all about this video and if you have any questions on comments then please ask me in the comment section and do not forget to like and subscribe the channel.